Brittany. Oh my god, I'm dead. Wow, Hi. we have a show today. Well, first we're gonna start with Brittany's recap of her insane weekend, and then we have an amazing guest today. Oh my god, I'm so excited for our guest. First of all, you guys, welcome back to This is the Worst. We're so excited to have you here. The stories you guys have been sending in have been fucking incredible. I was literally reading them on my flight home from my manic weekend. <laughs> And I was thrilled. They're, so they're thrilled. really funny today. But yeah, so this weekend was I was in menace mode. She was in menace mode today, uh, or this weekend, yeah. and today. <laughs> Literally, and it's just continuing. Yeah, still this morning, I woke up and Brittany's like, "Are you bipolar?" <laughs> and I was like, "Let's start there," <laughs> because my sponsor, my AA and Sex and Love Addicts Anonymous sponsor, I'm in both programs proudly, uh, <laughs> called me manic this weekend, but. I call it fun. fun. <laughs> Listen, being manic is so fun. It's so fun. And I'm like, am I manic or am I just horny? Because my body just wants, I just want to fuck. I mean, what was I telling you earlier? Is that like, because we're both in our 30s. Yeah. And they say in your 30s, the women are the most horny they'll ever be in their whole lives because our body thinks this is our last chance to have a baby. So it's like, let's fuck. Like, yeah. everybody. Yeah. Every person. Yes. And and I did. <laughs> I did and I will. <laughs> I did and I will fuck Wait, every me. person. My necklace just broke. Oh, no. It's not mine. Okay, it's not good. my brand. It's Tommy's. Um, yeah. <laughs> Tommy's brand. Um, it's Tommy's cock ring. All right. Well, <laughs> there we go. <laughs> um, yeah. So I went home. It's really, it's strange to me that I can't find someone to fucking LA, but that's just how the fucking cookies crumble in right now. I mean, you literally could, but it's like, well, everyone I ask you permission for to fuck, you say I can't fuck. Well, because you don't want to fuck people in the program because well. they're unhealed. You know what I mean? Like, I'm like, I want you to meet someone, you know, uh, at Ralph's, not on like, <laughs> not at like the, the field you... app where the guy's like, I like to be, I like to punch women. <laughs> like you, you keep finding people in all these horrible places. Like I, well, first of all, what makes you think I shop at Ralph's? I, I mean, <laughs> like, the level of shade. Okay, for people who don't live in LA, Ralph's is like our just like convenience grocery store. And then there's like high end grocery stores like Air One and Whole Foods and whatever. But, yeah. Okay, sorry, not Ralph's. Okay, maybe like in the aisle of Air One. I wish yeah. you would meet like a. Just I like, should do that. I should get a motorized scooter. <laughs> <laughs> just start bumping into people, make them buckle out at the knees. Seriously. I mean, I just feel like it's like, you know, you, you meet people online, you're like, this guy likes to be fucked in the ass. And this guy, like, and I'm like, who are these people? Like, what can't we you find you like a. a semi-normal guy you find uh, people who got shot in the head like i mean like it's like literally britney dates like the scariest people like not one normal person yeah well you know i'm horny for the sweet release of death so <laughs> anyone that can make me feel like i'm inching toward it i just better. i'm just and where and what, like the thing is is these days like where do you meet someone normal at a basketball and game I, oh okay <laughs> sitting courtside at a basketball game <laughs> No, I'm just kidding. I have no idea. I went I went back to Milwaukee and me and my friend got courtside seats to the game. And okay. So we have a few recurring characters this week. Okay. G Unit. Uh for those of you who remember him, he was the basketball player that I talked about that basically gaslit me and he was like, I'm not like all other athletes. He's literally saved in my phone as his name and the quote, I'm not like all other athletes. By the way, guys, this was the guy with the pimple on his dick. Yeah. Pimple. The the pimple, the skin tag on his yeah. dick. So G Unit was playing against um the Bucks. And he didn't know I was going to be there because I didn't tell him I was going to be there. So apparently on a different podcast, the girl was wearing the one of the hosts was wearing a sweatshirt with his team name on it. And I was like, oh, I fucked one of those players. He sucked. He scored no points. That's all I said. And then I moved on. And then one of his hoes heard the podcast, looked at his Instagram, saw that he was following me and put it all together. And I was like say it if that's one thing girls are we are fucking detectives detectives dude we are ace ventura like and literally this is what i have been saying about him the whole time i'm like don't follow everyone you fuck yeah. don't follow everyone you think is hot like i he's like oh because i said that to him i was like stop following everyone you fuck and he's like oh you just unfollowed me right before you said that i was like i never followed you honey like <laughs> i'm not i'm not a fucking idiot zinga zinga wow. but yeah so a bunch of those girls i think like three of his hoes he's like you're fucking my game up 
they saw the podcast and then so when i was at the game he sees me he does like a triple take and then he looks me in the eyes and he's like did you see that i scored and i was like that is your literal job (laughs) i was like you're like do you want a prize for doing what you're supposed to do i'm like do you know how much money you get paid (laughs) to do that no but anyway the girls that reached out to him that were like disappointed that we hooked up or whatever they're like oh yeah listening to this podcast is usually like usually my zen until today oh wow dude and i'm like okay but wow but also if you're fucking an athlete like unless you just fell off a banana boat <laughs> like those guys are not faithful to you one of my favorite jokes i used to tell is uh my favorite thing about watching sports games is to think about how many girls are at home who think they're watching their boyfriend like <laughs> Do you think there's any athletes that are loyal to their girlfriends or wives? Any? In my opinion, no. Not one? No. Not even like the Travis Kelsey guy who's with Taylor Swift? Or well, a- maybe in this moment right now because a fucking CIA will take him out. <laughs> He's not. Or she'll come out with a song. Are you ready for yeah, it? Ready? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to rip your balls off. <laughs> <laughs> like, Yeah. But, yeah. but usually they're not. It is my uh, strong belief that you have to know what you're getting yourself into when you talk to athletes. And that's why, like, when I was younger, I loved talking to athletes because I knew what I was getting myself into. It's like, we're going to have fun. It's going to be temporary. It's going to be short. We'll see each other when we see each other. And that's great. That's kind of why I like them again now because I'm like, I just got divorced. I don't want anything serious. It's nice to, like, go get my back blown out and then <laughs> fly back to LA. Brittany's dad also listens to the podcast. Oh, yeah. What's up, Charlie? <laughs> Hey, Dad. Listen, Charlie, I'm sorry about that. Um, wow. Hey, Dad. Yeah, I was limping when I got home. So. Brittany. I'm going to put straight to jail. Straight to Brittany, j- straight to jail. Straight guys, to Brittany jail. is on one. If there's any guys that listen to this podcast that have a good head on their shoulders, which they probably don't if they're listening to this podcast, <laughs> can you please slide in Brittany's DMs and like take her to therapy or like <laughs> take, take her to the- lunch, <laughs> take her to like a good, healthy lunch somewhere, like just talk to her nicely and not fucking... Do you know how bored I would be? <laughs> like... like- Take me to a BDSM party. <laughs> Do you think that you are only attracted to people that are chaotic? Yeah, a hundred percent. I'm <laughs> repeating a pattern of childhood trauma. Like my, it's like the addiction to chaos because my mother was chaotic and there was never any like consistent love there. So I continue to seek out partners who I know won't love me because it's just something that I'm familiar with. It's like you choose the familiar hell over the what is it? What do they say? They say you choose a familiar oh, hell over a healthy uh like change or whatever. Yeah, or just like something that. I've that's heard that a lot. like peaceful yeah. and different. Yeah, so, yeah. It makes you uncomfortable. When I was married, my marriage was very peaceful and I created chaos. I was like, "Hey, <laughs> like what's your ex-wife up to?" <laughs> like, got to throw a wrench in this yeah. somehow. Yeah. I was like, "Ooh, looks like she's pregnant. Is it your baby?" <laughs> like <laughs> just i was a fucking psychopath i created chaos and then once our marriage got to a place where and this is you know why a lot of the marriage falling apart was my fault it's like once the marriage got to a place where i could not create chaos like i couldn't do it it was just because he was so healthy he was so healthy well he was a little codependent but like mostly very healthy yeah um when i couldn't create it then i left because then i created the chaos with the divorce Wow, dude. And I feel like a lot of women and, you know, and men can probably resonate with this is if you grow up in a traumatic environment, you're going to constantly have to be aware when you're in a relationship with someone, you know, when things happen, are you the one that is trying to create some kind of tension because that's what you're used to Mm -hmm. or, you know, or is it really genuinely something wrong? And I even feel that way in my relationship right now with Tommy. I feel that way all the time, you know? Um, oh, the saying is we prefer known hells over unknown heavens. And that's so true. So true. That's like, a- it's really, really true, yeah. honestly. So, I mean, on, that's something I think we have to check ourselves on. We yeah. really do. And you were saying that you feel that way about your relationship with Tommy. Right I now. do, because yeah. he's like so chill, mm-hmm. and I get like nervous because I grew up the same as you with like an unpredictable mm-hmm. parent and I I'm constantly was on my toes and ma- and reading people and you know and checking and scanning people's faces and reactions to things and overthinking everything to keep myself safe mm-hmm. and so now in my relationship where my husband's just chilling mm-hmm. I fucking sit there and I overthink everything right. and I'll be like nah! and he's like yeah. what what's yeah. wrong like are you okay I was just I was just watching Instagram Reels. Yeah. <laughs> like, like yeah. he's just chilling, you know what I mean? Yeah, and- I think it's it's human nature to create chaos if that's what you're used to. Yeah. And I get it because Tommy is so chill. He's so chill. And you guys are like in such a good place yeah. that I feel like your mind kind of goes like, where can, where can I find a problem then? Also, I just get scared sometimes too because I'm like, 
when's the other shoe gonna drop because you're always waiting for yeah. like something bad to happen because right. you know i mean we've had a lot of shoes drop <laughs> while we've been together have, there's been quite a few not hit. Yeah, quite no, a few shoes <laughs> been hit with some shoes yeah. in the fucking head yeah. um but you know it's not like it's not you know things between us it's other people mm -hmm. throwing shoes at us or yeah. into our relationship you know it's like we're just trying to chill and then it's like here's this series here's another series yeah. here's this x here's that x it's like god we just want to fucking break man it's yeah yeah i mean nobody i nobody when they're making that that stuff thinks about what it's even doing to you or your marriage no they don't care they just want no. money or whatever yeah so. so that's really unfortunate but anyway so g unit was butthurt and uh every time he scored he would stare through my soul and uh. everyone in the crowd is like who is he looking at what is he doing and then he hit me up afterwards and asked me who i was there to see and i uh i didn't tell him it wasn't him. It's not. No, it wasn't him. If he would have got a call when I landed to Milwaukee if it was him. Wow. No, it definitely was not him. And then oh, I don't even know if I can say this next thing. Never mind. I can't say it. I had a joke that was great, but it would give away who I was there to see. Oh, so. shit. <laughs> Never mind. Um, okay. So then I did a Marquette reunion, and one of the guys who... I can't say this either. Damn. I know it's gonna be just like too many clues to like exactly the right person. There's people sitting there writing all this. Yeah, they're just like, writing all this down. They're like detectives. They have a board yeah. with like those they're red lines, those red like, strings, just right. connecting shit to yeah. make it make sense. <laughs> I can't. Like, Which NBA player yeah. is she yeah. talking about? I give two clues. They're like this one right here. <laughs> oh my wow. god dead. no so i did see someone else um that played for one of the teams. Not gonna say which one that I used to hook up with, and I was like, well, hello, Dada. Because he saw me. He got on the court. I mean, when I say it was chaos, when I say it was absolute chaos, like the guys that were interacting with me during the game, I get on the court and this guy just like waves right at me. All the other guys are looking at the, that guy waving at you and they're yeah. like, wait, I thought yeah. she was her for me. Yeah. I'm dead, yes, That's Brittany. literally what it was. I can't. And then meanwhile, what would Jesus do? The guy who asked me about oh, Jesus. I like that guy. I know you I do. I love you, Jesus. I like him. Jesus He's a good love. man. He's Well, that's what you think. <laughs> He's putting on a good show, but he was there too, and everyone's fucking talking to me, and I'm just like, hey, could you uh, not blow my cover right now? I'm trying to act like I fully believe in Jesus, and I've had sex with two people. I can't have two people on the court waving at me at the same time. Can I ask you one question? Yes, please. Okay, so I look at these basketball players, and they're like huge. Yes, yes, dad, yes. But you dude. like that? Oh, yeah. Doesn't it ever scare you? Like, they're like 6'5", and they have massive cocks, I'm sure. They have real nice Like, cocks. what kind of size are we talking about? Just for example. Like, like if you had to guy, show me, like, on comparison. The guy here. I fucked this weekend is probably here, here to here. What? And this thick. S Brittany. That, how do you take that? That would uh, be coming up through my well, mouth. Well, I did start bleeding because it hit my IUD. And he's like, you're bleeding. And I'm like, oh, I don't get a period because I have an IUD. And so you're just making, you're knocking my IUD out. He was just fucking your heart. <laughs> ow, yeah. ow, you're throwing my heart rhythm off. Yeah. Oh my God, dude. No, but have you ever had a threesome? Yeah, of course, but not with my friends. Oh, okay. Well, first of all, yeah, of course. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what your life's like. <laughs> no, I've told you before. Remember my ex who used to like want to hire girls all the time? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Okay, okay, okay. Um, so we used to have threesomes, but that's when I was like young and fun and I was trying to be like a people pleaser. Yeah. I was on Molly. Um, I was actually just high on Molly. Um, but she started talking about it in front of the guy that I was going to fuck. And then I'm like, of course, he's going to now want to have a threesome. Oh. And so when we were hooking up, he's like, get your friend over here. And I was like, no, I, I don't do that anymore. But I was like in a really weird position because I don't. Do you like threesomes? See, here's the thing. I like girl. I like me and a girl by myself. I like me and a guy by myself. Same. But with three's company man it's too much i always yeah. get jealous i'm like i say i'm too competitive for threesomes because i really am like whenever yeah, she's i can't getting... imagine you in a threesome you can't imagine me in most scenarios <laughs> i can't even imagine you by yourself <laughs> <laughs> honestly i get way too competitive in threesomes whenever she's getting the dick i'm like well, I'll just go fuck myself then. <laughs> I like start putting my pants on. And I'm just like, well, get me the fuck out of here. But yeah, he wanted to make it a threesome. And I was like, uh, no. <laughs> no. Wow. <laughs> no. Do you and think then, you ever will have one again? I don't really know. I If I find the right. I'm so jealous. 
Like, yeah. I would really have to heal a part of me that feels abandoned yeah. immediately when he starts fucking the other girl. Wow. Because there's something really deep in me that gets, like, triggered. Uh-huh. And I just sit there and I hate them both. <laughs> So when so you're a blast. so when your relationship with Chris when you were married and you like were like you know not interested in having sex with him anymore maybe the answer to that would have been a threesome because then you would have been like no he's mine well what I thought the answer was was when we separated we opened everything up and I was like if I know he's having sex with other girls I will want him back. And then I couldn't even trick myself into that. And so it didn't make you jealous. So no. that's how you knew you were really. That's why I was like, oh, he's just my best friend. And Aww. the other parts are gone, unfortunately. By the way, we love her ex-husband. We and you him. have such a healthy relationship with him, yeah. which is so wonderful. Yeah. I don't, you're probably the only one I know that has a really healthy relationship with their ex-husband. I'm so fortunate that he offered me his friendship after I left. Because it was... The bo- <clears throat> what I was most scared of is I saw his first marriage end and he never spoke to that woman again. It ended much differently. She had an affair. She got pregnant with the other guy's kid pretty quick. It ended much differently. But when I see this man cut her the fuck off, like blocked her on everything, changed his phone number and never thought about her, talked about her, anything ever again, the only time she would ever get brought up if I was like, do you care what's going on with this person? He'd be like, literally not at all. Isn't that scary you a little bit? T- that's what I'm saying. I was terrified to, to leave yeah. because then I'm like, oh, he could do that to me. And he's like, no, this is different. Like, That's how should. Tommy is with his exes. Like, you know, people try to make all these movies and stuff like that. And I'm like, don't you like care? Don't want to talk to him? He's like, absolutely not. Like no. never brings them up, never talks about them, like never says anything. And I mean, he was with some of, he was with one of them for like eight years, you know? And yeah. I'm like, you don't even like, think about this person or like whatever because he like never mentions anything and like we share a computer and stuff like that and never see anything like and he's just like no he's like i'm happy where i am right now yeah but it is so crazy how some men can do that they can literally just go whoop okay i think a lot of men can do that i think women we tend to ruminate a lot more and think about the past a lot more and um alex has a question Okay, was Q and they were together, but I think you're not gonna like the clip with the legs apart now. Oh, put my legs down. Well, you they were it was cute together, but now oh. I'm wondering. I'm just worried. About Should the put table, them like this. This is a good combo. Yeah, it's cute like that. Okay, okay, okay. 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 We just don't want your puss front and center. <laughs> it's just it's you open. guys don't like my full frontal puss <laughs> view. Yeah. Just so tight and all puffy because yeah. I have a pad on for my period. Just all fluffy. Literally just said subscribe to my OnlyFans. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> You guys look down, all of a sudden you see that I have an OnlyFans. Yeah. Okay, all right, all right. There's Legs a, are back down. The whole time. Legs are back down. QR code on your pussy. I'm dead. I'm dead. A QR code to scan the puss. Yeah, so it's weird. It's weird how, because I'm like, I mean, I have a lot of exes, and I guess, like, I do think of them from time to time. I don't miss them, but I do think of them from time to time, you know? And, like, stuff will happen, and I'll, like, mention something, like, oh, I did this or whatever, but he, yeah. like, never does that. And yeah. it's fucking crazy to me. Guys are just, some guys can just, they can w- compartmentalize. They can just go, boom, that's over. I'm here now. And I think if we talk to a therapist or a medical health professional, they would say there's, that's probably very unhealthy. Yeah. But I do think that is how guys just deal with stuff. They're like, if I don't ever talk. I remember listening to a podcast once and they were talking about the reason why men move on from relationships and break up so much quicker than women is because when women break up, we go talk to all of our girlfriends about the breakup, which means we are reliving the feelings of breaking up and kind of reinciting the trauma and the emotions and all of that stuff. So our brain thinks it just happened. Where guys, they go drink beers with their friends and they're like, I don't want to talk about that bitch. And then they just move on because they're not continuing to like relive. Even if it's painful, they're not reliving the pain over and over and over again. It's so crazy to me. It's mind blowing. Like they literally don't even like bring stuff up, you know? It's wild. Yeah. That's insane. If you're a guy that listens to this podcast, maybe comment. I mean, do you think, do you guys think about people and just not say anything? Or do you just kind of, you just move on with your life, you know? Which is wow. That's incredible. I wish I had that kind of skill to just be able to like sever you know a connection me too i was thinking about this last night there's this girl on instagram who did like a spoken word thing about a friendship ending Mm. and i i got so sad about one of my friends that i had we haven't talked in five years but we were best friends for 10 Mm. and i just feel like 
the female friendship ending is our Roman Empire. Like it's those are a, so painful. They're so painful. It's the kind of heartbreak that just stays with you. In my experience, forever. And I have I have had a few of those actually. Yeah. I had a friend that I went to college with who we were really close, and like I noticed we were just growing apart really slowly, and mm-hmm. like just becoming really different. And it ended like not so nice, and we haven't spoken. I mean, we wrote. I spoke to her on email like briefly, you know, recently, and then I have another friend that I was friends with for a really long time. And was like my best friend for like a long time. And then we kind of drifted and we talk here and there and check in on each other. But neither of us are like want to hang out or like rekindle it, you know. And it's like it's just sad. It is sad because it's you can mourn something being over while knowing at the same time that person does not fit into your life anymore. And like God only takes people out of your life to make room for something that makes more sense for you. You know, so it's like anytime I think about reaching out to that person, I'm like, I don't even actually have the space for this person in my life anymore because the friends that have taken her place are so much more aligned with who I am and Mm -hmm. where I want to go in life. Yeah, I totally agree with that. And like outgrowing people is such a real thing, too, when you outgrow a person and you're just it's not even like there's beef. Yeah, there's not any beef. There's no hate. It's just sometimes you've grown in different ways and it's just not what it was, you know? But it is sad. I do agree. It's very heartbreaking. I just saw this on your podcast, a Mean Girl Pod. They were talking about if you're not losing friends, you're not growing. Really? That's a great quote. Yeah. Yeah, that's so true. I only have one. I have my my really good friend that I was my best only friend and best friend through – high school with Nadine, Nadina Pepper, um, we're still really good friends, which yeah. is really nice. That's like my oldest friend. And then my friend Jackie, who I was um, friends with in college. And that's that's like my oldest friends that I've had for years and years and years. But I also don't see them a lot. You know what I mean? Right. It's like, it's sad. But yeah. yeah, man, growing is so, all the people that come in and out of your life, it's, it really, I feel like they take pieces of you sometimes. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, I don't ever feel like I'm whole anymore. I feel yeah. like I've given pieces of myself to people and relationships. And then I try to, like, live my life and move on. And I'm like the Swiss cheese walking <laughs> around. You know what yeah. I mean? That's how I feel sometimes. But no, that's a good analogy. I do think when you give a lot of energy and a lot of time to a person, and then that ultimately, whether it's outgrowing or some betrayal or whatever happens, it's really painful to, like, pick up and keep going. Yeah. We just start crying. I, I know. Like, anyway, I'm like, anyway, speaking of <laughs> being outgrown. Oh, this is uh, the worst. Yeah, this is the worst. So yeah. I feel like I wanted to talk so much more about this weekend. And then when I started talking, I realized I really couldn't say anything. <laughs> yeah, because <laughs> like, then you're just going to give all your secrets yeah, away. I'm going to put myself, yeah, I'm going to back myself into a corner. I was like, I have so much to talk about. I'm like, never mind. I but I do, I do want to say, Britt, that I think it's really cool because like when I'm by myself, I'm always trying to find a relationship immediately because I'm like not really good at being by myself. But I will say like, it's really cool how you're just like living your life and you're not like trying to get a boyfriend you're literally just having fun you know yeah I mean I think I promised myself that I would give myself a couple years because what happened last time when I before I started dating my ex-husband was I just had gotten out of a different relationship that imploded horribly and I was like this is my year I'm gonna focus on myself fuck these guys I'm done I literally moved to West Hollywood I moved right next to the improv I was like I'm gonna get up every night I'm gonna do stand up I'm gonna blah 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 blah." two weeks later Chris and I started dating (laughs) and I gave eight years of my life to someone else and I'm like I can't do that again like I can't if something is meant to come to me you know God puts who is supposed to be in your life there at the right time but I can't go like foraging yeah I will look for dick but I will not I will not look for us dick hunting yeah. I'm fucking dead you got your dick hunting yeah. hat on <laughs> overalls dick hunting in I'm the just wild. looking for her. oh look there's one oh, look. oh never mind that's oh, just boy. a garden hose yeah. uh, I'm dead um yeah no i'm like if i could just find a fuck buddy i would be happy i just don't want to be flying around for dick anymore this can't be my story yeah flying for dick is weird and then also like how do you not get attached because i feel like uh, maybe for me i can only sleep with someone and if i really like them 
And then once I sleep with them, then I like them even more. Yeah. Does that not happen to you? Well, I mean, I think that's sort of honestly what happened with G-Unit. I did not like him. And then I went and we hung out and we had fun and we fucked. And I was like, maybe I do kind of like you. <laughs> Our body releases a chemical. Yeah. Women. Yeah. Our, what is it called, Mike? Our body releases a chemical. Fair, well, you're asking because you Google. Pheromones? There's some, no, there's some actual chemical reaction that happens when we sleep with someone that makes us like fall almost in oh, love Oh, is it oxytocin? I think it is. Might be oxytocin. They but don't release that for me. <laughs> so guys, apparently it doesn't really happen for them. No, it's no, like no. only for women. And so we become like attached to people even yeah. people that we might not even really love but our body's like you love them yeah you love them they put the pee pee in, <laughs> in your pee pee you yes, love it like yes. it's very crazy like women we get like it's not even our choice pheromones, yeah pheromones our yeah, body is like yeah, yeah we're gonna have a family and yeah. a baby we're all gonna yeah. live in a cave together like yeah. that's our old school body like it's human nature it's so fucking weird yeah i think that's what happened because i was like trying to like lean into g unit with some like emotional stuff and he was like whoa easy crazy you know when my friend died i was yeah. like could you call me and then he didn't hear from him for 10 days i was like okay never mind that was not cool no i know but you know I think it's funny that he's getting caught up in his own shit because, you know, when he came to me, he's like, I'm not like all other athletes. And I'm like, an athlete saying you're not like all other athletes is like a woman saying, I never do this right before yes. they suck your dick yeah. to death. An athlete know? saying I'm not like all other athletes is something all other athletes would say. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Oh, uh, exactly. well, well, just like a nice businessman come along for Britney like I don't even want you with someone like no I, I don't either I, I want you like with someone super level headed and just fucking yeah just a real man who's like we're going on a date taking you out treating you nice you know speaking nice to you doesn't fucking want you to peg him with some pineapple in his ass <laughs> like you know what I mean like is there anybody yeah. left out there yeah. that's not you know yeah fucking listen, deranged for like long term that's what I want for myself too I think yeah. for short term I'm just trying to like I'll fuck anything with a pulse. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, the nice thing about this weekend is I took them straight out of the recyclables. I didn't even get another tick on the body count, which honestly lost track of that number so long ago. Oh, speaking of which, wow. remember I told you that my friend, so the one I was with, yeah. um, she was at a bridal shower in Wisconsin and she was telling a story about me and her. And this girl was like, are you talking about Brittany Schmidt? And she's like, yeah. And she's like, she took my husband's virginity. When of course I, you did. When I tell you I was today years old, when I found out I took anyone's virginity, I was like, who? And then she sent me the name, and I was like, vaguely remember this person. Wow. And to them, they're probably like, this was the one. <laughs> it was like angels falling from the sky. It felt like sticking my dick in a warm pie. <laughs> like, for them, it was probably like heaven on earth. I know, but I wish And you're I... like, what's his name again? I barely remember his face. <laughs> I'm dead. I wish you would have told me because he definitely didn't tell me he was a virgin. I would have done something festive, you know? <laughs> You're like, I would put tassels on my boobs or something or like, you know, popped a bottle of confetti when we were done. Yeah. <laughs> a confetti cannon. <laughs> wow. I don't think I've ever taken anyone's virginity. I've had mine I taken. I didn't think well, you did. Oh, yeah. <laughs> You're not a virgin? <laughs> no. Surprisingly. Yeah. I feel like one. Oh, my God. Stop. I do. Now. Um, but that's so fucking crazy and then like did you hear from these people do they text you like these guys after you hook up with them are they texting you now no really it's a beauty it's the beauty and then see this is where we're different because I'd be like "Ah!" (laughs) like you were in my woo woo and you're not even gonna send me a message no it's fucking thug shit (laughs) dude you are too gangster calm down with the fucking army pants and just like you're too hard yeah you're fucking gangster dude she was sending me pictures of some of the ways she talks to these guys i was like is this is this two men talking to each other like i couldn't it was literally so hardcore like i was like the way she speaks to these guys like well what you trying to get into like you know what i mean like i'm like what the hell are these? I'm like, is this too? Is this a conversation of R. Kelly between himself? Like, this is crazy. <laughs> Literally, G Unit was trying to talk to me about who I was hooking up with, and. He's like, oh, we're Eskimo bros. And I was like, literally, you could make an all star team of Eskimo bros and you would still be on the bench. <laughs> How cool would it be, though, if you took all the guys you fucked in the NBA and put them on a basketball team? I bet they'd be a they'd great be so team. Good. <laughs> they'd be good. You're like, I have an idea. Unbeatable. <laughs> unbeatable just call it the schmitz yeah 
I can't. You're a basketball I team. I can't. Oh, you my You have your God. own team. Yeah. <laughs> so how'd you find these guys? I fucked them all. Yeah. Fucked them all. Knew they were great. I knew they, they got, were great. Gave them their star power. <laughs> can't. Oh, my God. Yeah, no. It's a... Uh... Should we get to some worse? Should we well, tell worse with Bunny or should we wait? I think we should do worse with Bunny. Okay, we're going to do worse with Bunny. Yeah. Okay. Oh, my God. I feel like that was a good... Yeah. Do you like that? Yeah. Do you I like do that? I do, too. I like it. Do you like that, girl? Do you like, do you that? like that? Do you like that big you, I'm dick, so girl? scared, Brittany, that you do said you... that the guy that you the guys that you're sleeping with, that their wieners are as thick as this mic. Is Tommy's not? Not this thick. I mean, this is thick, Brittany. This is almost like a soda can. No, I know. Oh. Oh! <laughs> Bleep. Bleep. I, I'll just say this. I remember the first time I saw his dick, I said a prayer. I was like, God, I'm going to need you to tap in for me. God's like, I'm solving God. wars. <laughs> Can you not God's use like, my prayers for yeah. this? God's like, there's starving kids. And I was like, I'm already on my knees. I am in a holy position. Please help me out. <laughs> and when I saw it again, I was like, I thought I remember this being maybe the biggest dick I've ever seen in my life. Actually, no, no. The biggest dick I've ever seen in my life was on a white boy, but a white boy, seven foot tall white boy. A who? Who goes out with someone who's seven feet tall? I didn't go out with him. Relax. I didn't go to like the movie in a mall <laughs> shop. I fucking got railed in a bowling alley. Right, climbed in like the sky skyscraper. Yeah, he, like, he had a car basketball player. carabiners and shit. Yeah. Wow. But he probably had a foot long. I just can't be attracted to someone that tall. I feel like it's not human. It's. Yeah, no, it's not like I was like, you're my long-term partner. <laughs> you know, I was like, Emphasis on long. Tonight is the night. Yeah. So how big was that guy's wiener? I think of, like about a foot. A foot? Mm -hmm. But I was 19, so my pussy was way more <laughs> You know what? And, and by the way, Brittany and I have given have self-tanned each other, and so I've seen her pussy, and her pussy's still very beautiful. These guys did not <laughs> stretch you out Doesn't like a... Like it doesn't look like a fucking number five at Arby's. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? Like, it looks great. It doesn't look like it's been, you know, a jellyfish sneeze or anything. You know what I mean? It doesn't look like an inside out fucking, I don't know, kumquat. Like, it uh, looks good. It's really tight looking. Thank you. Yeah, yeah I was all up in there. I was tanning. I was, yeah, she's like, I was expecting it because well, I was curious, too. I was like, let's see the thing. Yeah, that's I know you were. The thing that's eating all the cops. Let me see this fucking <laughs> cock gobble gobbling monster. And I'm like tanning you. And it actually was very cute and small. Oh, thank like, you. Like her little vagina parts like this big. It's got cute little wings, tiny little. <laughs> I just describing your pussy. Your dad is listening to this. He's like, "All right, and up, just unsubscribe. <laughs> unsubscribe." Had enough for that. I'm gonna go back to Shane yeah. Gillis's podcast. Yeah, literally, my dad loves Shane Gillis so much. Oh, I did take my dad to see Shane Gillis this weekend. So good. His huh? new hour makes me want to quit comedy. Like the fact that he just put a Netflix special out in his new hour, the first half is already fucking ready for Netflix again. I'm like, oh, I quit. I wrote one joke since I filmed my special. You know what, though? I just feel like some people, like, they're just, that's just who they are. You know what I mean? Like, they're just fucking, they yeah. just pump it out. And then, like, their life experiences, they're just so good at that. But you're really good at that. But you also structure, like, like longer jokes. You know what I mean? Well, my jokes are a lot more rigid. She's yeah. more, like, long-form storytelling. Yeah. Where it's like, he knows he's smart. He knows where every punchline is. But yeah. it feels more organic. Yeah. Mine feel more structured. Yeah, yeah. Which makes me feel like I'm not a real comic. But. Stop. You do great, okay. guys. Wait for Britney's news. When is your special coming out? I literally just got both of the rough cuts from both shows. I have to go home tonight and pick which joke goes on the special. I'm so excited. <laughs> so when do you like roughly think that it'll be released? Probably April. Cool. Yeah. Nice. I'm also not in a rush because I'm like, I don't want to tour again. Like, yeah. everyone in my DMs is like, when are you touring? When are you? And I'm just like... <laughs> Can I please rest? You're like, come to LA and see me. Oh my God. Yeah. You, I feel like you just got off a tour. You did. I know. It was like, what, a month ago? Two months ago? People that drop a special and continue to tour like Shane did, I'm just, I get it. Like, if you're selling out theaters, you're not going to say no to that money. But holy God, it's just so exhausting. It to takes me. the life out of you. Yeah. Like, it really does. Like, even just being on tour with my husband and I'm not even performing. I'm like, how are we going to play tonight? Like, right. I'm not even playing. I'm just sitting behind him on the drums. And yeah. I'm like, I don't know if I can make it. Yeah. I don't know if I'll be able to make it to sit behind you on the drums. Like, yeah. it's just so up and go, up and go, up yeah. and go. Pack, unpack. Yes. Hotels, one night. Wake up the next day early. Get on the plane. Fly. Like, I don't know. I give you so much credit. Like, so all these big comics who are constantly touring. Theo, like, Nikki Glazer, Like, all these people are constantly doing touring. I'm like, this must be so exhausting. 
so exhausting. I fuck, man. I mean, I, last year was the first year I toured, and afterwards I had to really th- like sit down and think and be like, is this actually what I want to do with my life? No. <laughs> to be honest, I do, you think, sleep. do you think? Do you? I think if these people weren't making as much money as they were, I don't think they'd want to do it either. I don't know. I think some of them are so mentally ill. Like it really is like that constant need for keeping busy. Yeah, the keeping busy, the constant need for validation. I think. And I'm also not excluding myself from the mentally ill. I'm obviously mentally ill. Also like, me too. Yeah. yeah so I didn't yeah. get offended by that. Yeah. No. So, um, but I think they need it. Like they love being on stage and they love being in front of people. And I do too in small doses. In I don't, small doses. I don't like it when it's fucking with my circadian rhythm. I don't like it when it's fucking with my workouts. I don't like it when it's fucking with my health. Because at the end of the day, you only get one chance to stay healthy. Yep. And losing sleep will be the quickest way to lose yeah. your physical health. I feel the same way. Like, what I only perform a couple times a month, and I, I like literally notice because I go up there and I give my all like the days i even told you i'm like i have a show you're like do you want to record another thing on thursday i'm like i can't i have a show i spend the whole day going over it in my head yeah and then i get up there and do mostly crowd work which is like so you have to think on your feet so quickly and it takes takes everything out of me but that's why i don't do it yeah and that's why i applaud you for doing it because it's like you get up there and you get in people's faces and you're like what do you do for work and i'm just like "I, i can't do that it's easier for me to just get into the pocket with my little jokies. Yeah. My little jokey jokies. Yeah. But crowd work is magical because then the audience thinks they're a part of the they show. They love it. They yeah, love it. They like love even it. when I was at the improv and I did it for <laughs> one of three times I've ever done it. That in was my, my life. favorite thing ever. I know. But it's like they love being a part of it. They do. They're like, you're talking to me? Yeah. The light goes on them. They're yeah. like, I'm famous. <laughs> yeah. 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 It's, they do love it. Yeah. They really do. Okay, guys, I just want to let you know. So today on the podcast, we have a very special guest. Her name is Bunny XO. She is the host of the Dumb Blonde podcast. So stay tuned, and we will be back with Bunny XO. Rolling, 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 rolling. rolling. Guys, we are back on This is the Worst, and we are here with our amazing guest, Bunny. You know her from the Dumb Blonde podcast. She is the significant other of Mr. Jelly Roll. Daddy. And I have been following you for a long time, and I'm just so happy to have you. You here dude i am so honored that you guys even had me here like thank you so much oh i really appreciate God. it dude I, you know what's crazy is when i first got on tiktok people had been messaging me about your podcast Aww. and people would literally hit me up all the time and go you need to go on bunny's podcast you need to go on bunny's podcast mm. you need to go on bunny's podcast and then i checked you out and i was like this is a down ass bitch no i love like, you you're just fucking chill man yeah, so are you though i love, I love that. that about you too though yeah like I, I think what drew me to you was that you are so such a like just a, like a down home personality like you can really read people over the internet i know that there's a lot of people who could put on masks but you just have always been like this is who i am and if you don't like it fuck off oh, well. yeah but you, she okay. does it so sweetly too i know she's well she's a very sweet person that's mm-hmm. the thing she's very guarded and she doesn't have a lot of people in her life but the one she has in her life she mm-hmm. treats like kings and queens Aww, like yeah. you're you if you're tell. in britney's circle it's very you're yeah. very fortunate no so. she's a sweetie pie and when i saw her going through some shit online i was just like no. And anytime through. she goes be, through anything. Be good to my girl. Yeah. I, my my best friend that I don't even yeah. haven't even met yet. <laughs> no, literally right now, like like you get protective over people. Yeah, I'm like, I'll drive a fucking car through their living room. <laughs> oh, like, I'm like yeah. let me know when it's ready to when we gotta be hooked. Yeah. I'm ready to go. Oh, I'm ready. Let's I'm ready go. To go. I'm always down to get ratchet. Yeah, same. Yeah. <laughs> no, there's like, dude, I just think it's I've been through so much and I know you have been through mm-hmm. so much and yeah. you have this crazy life story. Mm-hmm. And I was just like, wow, to hear all that and like you're so and you know you've come up from you know your crazy life and you know I just am like wow it's like it's I so sucked un- a lot of dicks to get here yeah all didn't of us we all. <laughs> 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 <Listen. laughs> well relatable um, I feel like that's everyone in this room but uh, yeah, including I Mike um, I, can't, I can't take compliments if you can't tell <laughs> I'm always like Woo, let me throw it right back at you yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no but it's fucking crazy and like I mean so when did it all turn start to turn around for you um probably when I when I got sober 2016 I had gotten out of a really really bad domestic violence relationship where like I was almost lost my life a couple Mm. times like it was really bad and um you know 2017 I was just I think that's when my spiritual awakening started and I was just like um I want to do better with my life I don't want to fucking be this 
girl, you know, because I grew up in the adult entertainment industry and I was just stuck in survival mode. I'd been on the streets since I was 14. So mm. you get to this point where you just don't want to be that person anymore, you know? Mm -hmm. And we got full custody of my husband's daughter, Bailey. And I just was like, I don't want to be a bad example for this little girl. She deserves to be mm -hmm. everything that she needs to be in this life. And I never want to be that person that inflicts more trauma on her. Oh, wow. So it was just a series of things. And I think just you get tired of shit and you just want to be a different human. You want to be yeah. a good human. Yeah. So. so I saw this on a podcast where Jelly was talking about how you got you basically said, I don't know where this relationship is going to go with you and I, but I'm going to help you get custody of this girl. Like, mm -hmm. I thought what fortitude that must take for you to even have the foresight to protect someone else's child like can you talk to me about how you got there with mm -hmm. like that decision yeah and I, I that clip went viral and I did that because it was the right thing to do and I never wanted like I've never talked about it and I never ever wanted to draw attention to the fact that I did do that for you know, my family. Um, but it was me being the woman that I needed, mm. you know, I Aww. need that little girl needed a woman. Mm -hmm. I need my little girl needed a woman like me yeah. and I never got that. So that was my opportunity to be that woman for Bailey. Yeah. So one of my favorite quotes that I went, read recently was saying that you're the adult that you needed when you were younger mm -hmm. right now, yeah. which I thought that was just like so powerful. Cause I think, you know, when you do go through childhood trauma, you don't have a really strong adult figure. And then when you grow up you're afraid to have kids because you don't want to continue the abuse and continue the trauma yeah but then what you don't realize is that you've done so much healing that you could be that person to yeah. a child which Absolutely. is really beautiful yeah so that's an amazing story i love that yeah. and i see like now your dad is he, how is your dad doing because i know your dad is bill cephas <laughs> is he still hanging in there he is he's you know it's crazy because he was literally on his deathbed like fucking three months ago they gave him three months to live he was he looked terrible and i was like dad you're coming to nashville with me let's get you out of here let's you know see what we can do at vanderbilt and he has been doing this thing called like spooky something and it's like um some sort of vibrational waves for his body oh, wow. and it he's gained 15 pounds mm -hmm. he's doing so much better his test results are like getting so much better Great. like I didn't believe him because I'm like into yeah. weird holistic shit too yeah. and I get it honestly from him but when he brought this thing out and was like I'm gonna sleep in these lights and do all this and I was like yeah right dad I was like we need to fucking do chemo we need to do something and he's like nope I'm doing this and it's really fucking working so so you have a relationship with him like a good relationship and then is it your so was he around when you were younger or like I just want to know more about you like yeah. your mom like was your mom not a good mom and yeah. what happened like how did you end up in the in the adult entertainment industry so when I was three months old so my mom was a stripper my dad was a musician um, when my dad when I was three months old my mom left me on a doorstep um, while my dad was in the hospital um, I was told that he was put in the hospital from shooting up cocaine he ended up getting hepatitis mm -hmm. um, but then he tries to tell me it was from the food but I was like why would you be at a hospital <laughs> like for that pushing. yeah <laughs> like come on dad like it, yeah. whatever it's whatever like either way dog. I still love you it doesn't yeah. matter um, and it took him like two weeks to find me when he got out she ran off with his organ player um, my dad raised me from the time that I was a baby he immediately divorced her because she dro dropped me on somebody's doorstep mm -hmm. never heard from my mom until I was 22 again um remarried and I had a severely abusive stepmom who it, the abuse was just emotional physical it was really bad and I had enough of it by the time I turned 14 I was like fuck this I'm out of here you know there was a bunch of people that I was around that I knew at such a young age that I did not want to be like mm -hmm. it was like when I was 14 I was like no I'm gonna grow up and do my own fucking thing mm -hmm. and I never went home I never went back never got another dollar from my parents cut my dad off didn't talk to him of course, I had a couple run-ins with them and stuff like that. But um, as far as getting into the adult industry, I um, got cheated on by a guy who was cheating on me with a stripper. And I've always had like a mor this moral compass because I had a, a lot of religious trauma after my dad remarried. He got caught cheating and then became like a Bible thumper. And it was like, wasn't allowed to listen to secular music, had to wear skirts down to my ankles. Oh, wow. Like it was crazy. Yeah. Oh, wow. So I always had this like moral compass of like, I can't do that. Oh my gosh, you know? And then I got cheated on and I was like, you know what? 
hold my fucking beer. I can do this. <laughs> and so, you know, motherfucker, yeah. you want to cheat on me? Yeah. She can do what I can do she better. Can do <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Sit down, bitch. Yeah, yeah. Like, take my fucking yeah. top off. Hold, yeah. my, hold my crucifix. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Literally. She's like, no, yeah. I, just got the t- I just got the crosses tattooed on me. Yeah, yeah for real. She sent you with a stripper. It's your mom. <laughs> yeah, oh, fuck. Damn it. Oh We're not in Alabama. <laughs> Son of a bitch. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, that's kind of how I got into the adult industry was stripping. I, and then. And then, yeah. So, you know, once you've been dancing for so long, you get to a point where you're like, do I want to go to the club and dance all night long and, you know, fucking have to get fucked up and have to do this? Or do I want to just go turn a trick for 15 minutes and make double what I would make in the club? Wow. You know, so. so then do people like approach you in the club and be like, hey, good looking? Like, <laughs> hey, I just imagine like, I just imagine like, I just don't know how it works yeah, at all. Time machine. <laughs> like clearly like very like not involved in this at all. But like a pimp just right. walks in in a purple jacket and it's all fuzzy. He's like, well, come with me, little girl. Like, how does no. it so they uh, pimps were a thing back in um, back in my day, <laughs> and um, but I never was with that. Oh, okay. I've always so my thing was like when I got into the sex industry was kind of like taking my power back because I was molested as a little girl, mm-hmm. and then I got raped by somebody that I really liked and oh thought he God. was my boyfriend, mm-hmm. you know. So I kind of hated men, and then my dad was so absent and didn't protect me. So adult work, adult. Um, you know, whatever we want to call it, escorting. And just being in the industry was more of like me being like, you can't touch me unless you're going to pay me. You can't, Mm. like, if you want to spend time with me, you have to pay me, you Mm. know? And I know people are still like, oh, well, you're still exploiting yourself. But at that time, they don't know what it's like. The little girl inside of me and in my mind was like, this is how I'm going to make them pay, you know? So I forgot where I was going with that. No, 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 you were explaining how, like, there's not really pimps anymore. Okay, yeah. Yeah. And so, like, pimps would definitely come in the club and they would try to, like, break Break you is what they call it and they ended up loving me because they would call me like their little renegade because they could never get me to like join forces with them oh, wow. but I was always protective of their girls and I would always look out for their girls and like you know if there was ever a problem I was always just very protective of them but I always did my own thing I just couldn't see me going off and turning a trick and then bringing my money back to a man mm. yeah like, I was just like no I couldn't do that yeah so what was your worst experience as a call girl like the yeah. worst thing that yeah. ever happened um there was a few i've gotten punched in my face before <gasps> and held in like hotel rooms and stuff like that yeah that's happened before but i think one of like the this isn't funny it's funny ish um but i used to like call myself like robin hood <laughs> so <laughs> i would like rob from the rich yeah. and give to the poor and i was the poor yeah. you know so <laughs> give so, me money bitch yeah. who's it going to yeah. me motherfucker yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Literally, yes. that's exactly how I how I, I thought can. of things. Yes. So, um, there's this thing in Vegas called like services, and you can sign up. And what they do is they send you on calls to like hotel rooms and stuff like that. And, what? Yeah, and it's, it's totally like a thing in Vegas, like it's legal, totally right? Totally yeah. a thing in Vegas. Okay. I'm probably like gonna blow the cover off of <laughs> dead. Everyone at home's like googling it. Yeah, They're trying to get on, on it. Listen, if they if they they probably know because you know the guys that are on the 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 corners like slapping stuff. Yeah, those that's papers. For the, yes, that's yeah. for as, escort oh, okay. services. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Shit. yeah. So one night I never did house calls, but I was fucking I needed money. And they were like, hey, we're going to send you this house call. This dude's hella rich, whatever. I'm like, okay. But I brought my girlfriend with me because I already knew I was just going to rob the dude. Normally, <laughs> normally what I would <laughs> so Is that bad? So I brought my friend in a gun. Yeah, <laughs> no guns. Yeah. No guns. Allegedly. Allegedly. I, I'm just kidding. Yeah. Statute of limitations isn't up on this one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Um, oh, but dead. like, so what I would do is I would go and I would get the fee. Like if you go, you say you have to go into a, a, a call. You say, hey, I need 500 up front. That's my service fee. And then we'll work on whatever's after god i'm like giving some giving the game away yeah. wow <laughs> and so what i would do is always get that fee steal it and then tell the fucking tell them oh they didn't have enough money for me and then th- i would always get to pocket the money so that was like my w- my little hustle i would hustle the services but anyways wow. we went to this fucking house walk in he had some this dude deserved to be robbed he had fucking <laughs> he had child porn playing <gasps> playing on the TV. Yes, it was horrific. And as soon as I walked in, I just like immediately felt my insides like crumble. And I was like, you need to turn that off right now. Yeah. And he was like, okay, okay, okay. Because I was getting like really aggressive with him. And the thing is, is if you leave a call, 
the services are not for the girls. They're for, you know, they'll like fire you or like you can't leave a call. So normally if in that situation, I would have walked out and left because yeah. I don't condone that behavior at all. But I had to get the money from the dude. Yeah. And so he he was like, OK, OK, I'm sorry. And I was just like, dude, what do you, you know, like, what are we doing? He leads me into this hospital room. In his house? In his house. He has a room that has a hospital bed in it that has one of the IV things. And it had an enema tip on the the bag, the bag, right? And he's like, I want you to give me a cocaine enema. And I'm like, all right. I'm like, because I knew I wasn't going to do it. But I was like, all right, well, get naked and lay on the bed. But you got to give me, of course, you give money up front. And I was yeah. like, you need to give me like a thousand or fifteen hundred up front just because of the shit you just put me through, you know? Yeah. And I could tell he was twacked out of his mind anyways. And I always worked sober. So I was always ahead of the game. But, um, he gave me the money up front. I was like, okay, baby, lay down naked, get naked and get comfortable. And the minute he took all his clothes off and laid down, me and my friend just booked it out the house. And I mean, this dude's chasing us naked down the street. <gasps> get back here, you fucking whores. No. <laughs> like just chases, like jumps on no. the car, slapping the windows. Like it was really bad, but you know, that's- he Bro, I would have given him the cocaine enema and given him way too much. <laughs> yeah, so then he no. dies, yeah. Yeah. right? Yeah. Just sick fuck, yeah, watching case. child porn. I'd be like, oh, it's not enough, more, <laughs> yeah. more. I just can't keep going till his heart explodes. Yeah, yeah, yeah no, that's what I would have done. He would have deserved it for sure. I would have been like, yeah. it's his fault, he did it. And then yeah. I would have wiped all my fingerprints Oh, and fuck, yeah, no, it would have been Dude, horrific. what a piece of shit. Yeah, totally. That's so the kind of people you deal with though, you know, not all the time, but the majority of the time. Really, real mm. freaks. Oh yeah, really. The hospital room in the house. Mm -hmm. That was like normal. <laughs> yeah. Stop. That's you go over right. people's house. They have like all kinds of <laughs> fucked up shit. Set oh, up. you. That's why I didn't do house calls that much because it was always some fucking weird shit going on. And you're in their house, so you're in their energy, yeah. and it's just like yeah. So I, I try to keep it in the hotel rooms as much as possible because at least there's security oh. and fucking you yeah. know. What is it about people? The more money they get, the weirder they fucking. The the weirder sexually. they get, yeah. It's like, why can't, like, we are seeing all these Epstein, the Epstein list coming out of, like, all the people at the top of the food chain fucking kids. It's like, why mm. do we hit a, a level of status that we start getting dark as fuck sexually? Like, what is that, I wonder? I don't, I think it starts out, minus the kids shit, I think it starts out, like, getting the weird fetishes is a control thing. Yeah. Because once you have so much fucking money, it just gets to a point where it's like, you people will do whatever they want they whatever you ask them to do yeah so it's like they start getting weirder and weirder because their requests are they need to quench that urge more you know mm -hmm. so they're some guys like being walked on with fucking six inch heels on their back you know wow. like and I'm, we're, I'm talking like ceos of companies like like to be like bonded up and like tied up because that's their way of releasing control wow you know? have Whereas you ever pegged people, someone Boyfriends. Okay. Yeah. Oh, like, Damn. <laughs> She's like, I saved that for it. That's my intimacy. Oh, <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's a good time for me. Yeah. No, wow. I'm just kidding. No, I'm not into that at all. Yeah. Okay. Wow. No, because that's a control thing for women. Damn. Yeah. So I picked somebody when I was like 21 and didn't know that that's what it was called. It was a dude you put a strap on on? No, so pegging is just any sort of anal, right? Or do you have to well, have a strap on? Well, it's usually a strap on, Okay, but I no, think I'm not into be. strap ons. No, okay. okay, see, so I thought pegging was just you fucking you might a dude be right. with anything. I don't know, I could be wrong. But I'm just not. sticking stuff in his ass. It's yeah. just like a cucumber <laughs> out of like Whole Foods. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was one of my ex-boyfriends and I remember he bent over and just had the biggest butthole I'd ever seen. <laughs> it was just gaping. It was, it was just it was a Grand like, Canyon. You could count like the rings around it like a tree trunk. Like it was crazy. That's how many dicks have been in his ass. No, literally. <laughs> and like he fucking well he had cheated on me that was the one who cheated on me with a stripper and was so he bi it was my payback i don't know he was always like that super alpha so, so then he's like, gay yeah, yeah straight, he, was straight gay. he had his shit in the ass oh no yeah. he backed into it like a cat it was like oh no i think you had your whole arm and he's like is it in yet <laughs> yeah come on fuck it up to my shoulder bro <laughs> i can't <laughs> Yeah, so, Jesus yeah. Christ! I've lived a full life. So yeah. are you yeah. so over shit now sexually because you've been to do, had to do so much? I mean, I like romantic shit. Yeah. I like you know just kiss me, love on me. Like you know, I don't need weird shit. Like yeah. I'm, I'm not vanilla by any means. My husband says I have more testosterone than a UFC fighter, <laughs> but Hilarious. like and I'm a hor I'm a horny motherfucker. Yeah. But I just like you know pretty sex i guess yeah, is what you kind mm -hmm. gentle yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> i mean you know choke me every now and then but i don't need to like you know you don't gotta ram me down my throat and make my face bleed or anything yeah. weird like yeah. that yeah. So, yeah i love that dude that's fucking crazy <laughs> man and you're so happy with your guy now like, 
like it's like nice when you find your person when you feel safe yeah Yeah. how long have you guys been together um eight years oh wow it's been a long time Mm -hmm. so i actually met him i was at a comedy show in nashville at zanies Mm -hmm. and i met him like literally right before he was about to blow up and mm-hmm. he was playing a song in the green room he's like this so- song is gonna put me on the fucking map mm-hmm. like mark my words yeah. and it was it was the song that he blew up on Save and I was, me. yeah oh, and i was yeah, yeah, yeah it was really special to watch it he was so had so much conviction mm-hmm. he's very sweet too he's he very... what you see is what you get with them yeah <clears throat> like he is like just the, he i call him my little cherub angel mm-hmm. because he's literally just an angel on earth like we don't deserve him and you he's supported him so that he could work on his music and get to to do his thing, right? Like you yeah. got you had an apartment and he yeah for moved sure into your apartment. I w- I want to clear the record with you guys though because I feel like everybody always is like, oh, she took care of him. Like my husband has always been a hustler. Yeah, like he would have figured it out no matter what, it, with or without me. That man was fucking gonna be who he is today. You yeah. know, granted, I saw that in him fucking so long ago. But like the first time we met, I said, you are so special. Mm-hmm. You know, because you could just feel it and you just feel his energy. But um. You know, we we're a team and Mm -hmm. it took a team to build what we have now. So I never want to take full credit for that and be like, yeah, I'm the reason why, you know, like I was out there sucking dicks to my man. (laughs) (laughs) Drop lyrics. Because I was. Is the song done yet, babe? My throat hurts. How much more studio time do we need? (laughs) Literally. God damn. My My jaw's tired. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, Jesus Christ, though. No, he um, he I was working, though. Yeah. Hardcore, right? It's a lot of work. Industry, whenever. (laughs) Fuck, I man, it. I can't. I used to answer phones for a, a calling service. Oh, my God. Just okay. like suck a dick. Those were my jobs in yeah. life. And so I would pretend to be the girls. Oh, my God, yeah. And I'd be like, yeah, baby, so you what do you it. want? And he's like, why are you talking like that? I was like, I don't know. What, yeah. like, what like, makes you horny? I was so bad at it. Aww. And like, and then so the girls would then go, and then they would call me when they got there and then check out, and they had a security guard mm. with them and all this stuff. So I used to answer phones for a calling service. And then That's I just amazing. was like, yeah, isn't that crazy? Yeah. Yeah, but then I was like, I can't do this anymore. Because I would like make cartoon voices and stuff and they'd be like uh we're getting complaints that you you're not turning people on <laughs> yeah. i'm like what do you think of my rugrats impression? i, I would have loved if you were my phone girl we would have made so much money together seriously oh, yeah the girls awesome. and i always just felt for the girls i mean but the, they, they would get really lucky sometimes like they would tell me sometimes guys would like just hire them to like come clean their house yeah. or whatever mm-hmm. and like pay them so much money to like yeah. i had a friend who always used to hire escorts and then when they would get there he'd get too nervous to do anything mm-hmm. so he would just pay them full price to leave yeah amazing no, he'd be like, i'll pay you all the money if you just get out of here no and i say that all the time like oh, i've talked about this before like when you're an escort 50 percent of the time you're not having sex with people yeah wow. you're getting paid to go to dinner you're getting paid to be their therapist you're getting paid to walk them around like a cat or put them in a <laughs> diaper like there yeah. there's just so many different facets of what you do as an escort so Wow, so the fucking multi-talented. En- Jesus, <laughs> yes. I mean that's kind of crazy. Okay, so the enema thing is really fucked up. Is there any other ones that you were like, Jesus, like this oh is my fucked gosh. up? Gosh, um, not that I can think of right now, off, yeah. off the cuff. Yeah, um, but if it comes to me, I'll okay, let, let, sure. let us know. <laughs> yeah. yeah, dude. We speaking of cum. Oh, oh shit, should we get to it? Cum, yeah, you guys want to hear story. some of the shit people yeah. fucking say? Yeah, make dude. me feel better so, about my life. <laughs> yeah, today is a mixed bag. We usually have a topic every week, but it's just like mixed stories that have been left out that are still good. So we want to talk about them. So this one is called cum stains. Mm, <laughs> sounds delicious. Mm-hmm. <laughs> my dad was away on a trip with his girlfriend, meaning I had an empty house all to myself. During this time, a friend was having a house party a couple of doors down. It was perfect. We could stumble back to my place and have a place to stay with no adults. Keep in mind, I'm probably 17 at the time, so this is a major win. My friend and I leave the party and make our way back to my house. This guy I was seeing at the time came over, and my friend brought a guy, too. I set her up in my dad's room. Me and my guy were fucking, not having a clue what's going on downstairs with my friend and her guy. Everyone leaves in the morning, and I'm thinking, okay, time to make the house spotless, including dad's room. So it looks like nothing ever happened. I'm making the bed in my dad's room when I see cum stains all over the black sheets. I think... Uh I think fuck I gotta clean this up right now and I'm also mildly grossed out that I'm cleaning up some random dudes cum but would rather that than my dad see this mess the next day at school I see my friend and we catch up about how the rest of the night went I asked if they slept together what happened how did it all go down and she replies we didn't sleep together as if I would sleep with someone in your dad's bed I was horrified so you're telling me that those cum stains were my dad's that's what I was picking up on I was like why is she cleaning up her dad's cum I was like girl 
Holy. I, I almost bro. fucking threw up right there in the middle of my ancient history class. I remember the incident every now and again and still makes my skin crawl. Ugh. Yo, isn't it so weird? Like, I don't know if this has ever happened to you guys, but when you're younger and you accidentally walk in on one of your parents naked. Oh, dude, bro. It's, it's the so worst. traumatizing. It's the worst. Like, I'm like, ah, like I like, so burned bad. in your brain and you just like want to like fucking pour what acid about, in your eyes. What about when it smells? <gasps> what smells? <laughs> the cum smell. The, no, like the not sink. the cum. Well, my mom, my stepmom's vagina smelled so bad. Oh, you no. could smell it like from oh, far away? In the, it was like it would fill up a room. Oh. <gasps> It was so bad, and I walked in on them banging one time, and I was I was a kid, so I was like, "What is that smell?" Uh-huh. Like it was so bad. BV yeah. baby. Oh, that's exact now. So you said she was really mean to you. Do you think mm-hmm. she was just like way jealous of you? Because I had a stepmom that was really abusive too, and I think it's like a jealousy thing. Do yeah, you? I think it's a jealousy thing, you know, because they don't like the relationship that you have with the man that they right. love. She was also, uh, and I'm gonna cut her a break. She was also very young when she married my dad. She oh. was yeah. 17, oh. taking on a five year old. Oh, so. oh wow. Okay. Yeah. They, they're not together anymore. Oh fuck no. No. <laughs> yeah. She would be taking care of his ass if they still were. <laughs> no, I'm just right, kidding. I right, love you, right. Bill. Love you, Bill. Oh my god. Wow, dude. That's yeah. fucking crazy. Mm-hmm. Tommy told me one of his exes, like her pussy always smelled like fish. Oh no. And he was like, it was just like no matter what, he would say stuff and be like, hey, it smells kind of crazy, and like she would try. <laughs> like, and my husband's like so nice, Aww. so I'm sure he like is just nice about it. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, like I have like blood clots and shit, but my pussy yeah. never stinks. Me ever either. right never stinky but he would tell me that it would literally smell like old fish oh, like he no. would be like well, he said he'd had to hold you his can breath sm- as a woman you can smell you can your smell vagina. It. yeah 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 that's if how i knew i had uh urea parva plasma when i had it because mm. it smelled like a fucking old fish factory i couldn't yeah. even sit next to myself i'm like i'm like take, take this detach pussy the pussy <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> please somebody get rid of this pussy it stinks oh my God. like i was eating dinner and i was like caught a whiff of it i was like I have to go Isn't home. I'm gonna fucking worst? kill myself. Like, yeah, that's I'd the rather worst. be dead than have a stinky pussy. Like oh. I don't know how girls are just out here wheeling around with stinky puss. I, can't I always do thought it, some of them couldn't smell it because it's like you know how sometimes you can't smell your own your own strain. When you go you pee, know? you can you smell. smell. Yeah, yeah, There's yeah. no yes. way that you can't smell wow. your pussy. Yeah, wow. if something if the pH is off, you smell it. Clean the pussies, ladies. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Clean your fucking pusses, guys. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. also Metrogel is amazing. What is it called? Metrogel. If you ever have BV bacterial vaginosis, it's a gel. That you just put a little fucking syringe Is on it there, like at right, and it makes your vagina just heavenly. Perfect. Yeah. Love Does that. it like help cure it too? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. It's, a, it's a like a antibiotic. Oh, like nice. The boric acid, I think. It's Shout important. out to Metrogel. Also, have you ever heard of the killer? Sponsor the, me. That's, I'm just kidding. Yeah, yeah sponsor us. <laughs> we need we need <laughs> pussy sponsorship. <laughs> the killer needs to sponsor the us. The killer. <laughs> there's like this all in my dude. Body. There's yeah. this stuff you can get at Target called the killer, mm. and it's little boric acid suppositories, and you stick it up, and it like literally fixes anything. That's amazing. Yeah, it's amazing. You just get it at Target. Yeah. Days. Oh yeah, Bunny, you want to? Oh no, one? no, I don't have my bifocals on. Oh, <laughs> yeah. If you guys want me we to, gotta I gotta get Bunny's pull them monocle out. so she can. <laughs> Literally, I'm so yeah. blind. I am so blind. If you guys want me to read, I will. But I no, know. no, I don't have to read. That's fine. A couple weeks ago, I was moving out of my parents' house and moving the spare bed with my sister out of my dad's office. This said office was my old bedroom. Dad is in the room with his back toward me. When I pulled the bed skirt off the box spring, my large glass butt plug fell to the floor. Oh my my sister was standing at the door and saw it happen. I said, oh. <laughs> Oop. Oop. So, Oopsie. so that's where that went. And quickly grabbed the plug and put it in my pocket. I turned and looked at my sister and her face immediately verified that she saw what I had just found. We ran into the other bedroom and she told me dad found the other one. It's in his pocket. Oh, I God. said, you're fucking kidding me. She said, no, he put it in his pocket before Ma- mom walked in the room. She would have found it. How did dad know what it was? Dad's I mean, like, this is nice. We're going to put this on the mantle. Like, this, <laughs> this is bigger than the one I've got. Yeah, I can't. Um, put it in his pocket. She would have found it. So we go about finishing up moving shit from room to room. An hour goes by and I had yet to retrieve my butt plug from my father's safekeeping. He had come downstairs and sat at the kitchen counter with me, my mother and sister, and my plug in his pocket the whole time. As I was was about to leave the house, I got a text from dad that said, come upstairs. I walked in the office where he was sitting at his desk and he reached in his pocket. I said, you have something of mine. He handed me the medium sized plug and all he said was, don't worry, I didn't sniff it. (laughs) 
what's up with these dads, man? That's crazy. <laughs> I've never used a butt plug. Do girls use them a lot? I don't love them. I don't love anal stuff. Yeah, I don't I'm either. like, it's, I can't even shit normally. Dude. So the last thing I want is a big dick up my ass. What's like, up with hot or, girls and tummy issues? We've all got, it's fucking our nervous systems are wrecked. Dude, that's what it is. Because <laughs> we're anxious. Yeah. For like sure. I don't even know. It's either like really constipated or just a Same. waterfall. Same. Yeah. Like it's like nothing yeah. in between. Yeah. I put prunes in my smoothie every day oh just so I can shit regularly. Like I'm senior citizen. Bro, they're so <laughs> good for point. you, but it's the anxiety. Mm-hmm. It throws your yeah. whole thing off, dude. Yeah, it sure. really does. Every doctor that I've ever seen, like the, when I they used to think I had IBS when I was younger, Aww. but they were just like, no, she's just in fight or flight all the time. I'm just like, <laughs> like it's so horrible. Poor baby, it oh sucks. Our poor little buttholes. When are we gonna? chill i'm dude i'm ready i'm Whatever ready to chill yeah. i'm like we're here fuck. all week daddy gets in tonight cut for grammy week so. oh amazing it. that's yeah. gonna be it's a fun week, awesome. for oh, a are week for you guys oh it's a huge week for you guys are you guys doing anything for grammy week no. i got we got invited to parties but tommy just had hand surgery oh. so he just wants to chill yeah plus he's sure. like not into partying anymore Good. you know he especially because we're sober mm-hmm. too so it's like he hates and i maybe you relate to this mm-hmm. and britney's also a uh, sober, sober person. Oh, good. So we all kind of hate being around people when they're really wasted mm-hmm. and they talk to you with their hot wine breath like, uh, <laughs> come here. Yeah. Let me tell you how I Everybody love you. Everybody turns Jewish. Yeah. 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 I'm yeah. just in your face. Right and they always want to talk way too close. And oh, you're like, yeah. God. They're like, no. I love That's you. That's Haley. Haley gets so drunk. She'll come in. The, we'll be in the tour bus and have no room for Stop. each other. Stop. Haley and her and hot wine breath. will come and talk to me for like an hour Stop. in my back bunk. And I'm like, all right, I'm going to bed now, bitch. Oh, my God. Wait. I love her though. She's like my little sister. <gasps> I can't. You're all <laughs> closing the curtain. <laughs> She's like, one more, one more thing. Smashing her face <laughs> uh, <laughs> out. Yeah. So wait. Hey, go oh, ahead. go ahead. No, no, no. Go ahead. Uh, so you're sober, mm-hmm. and then we also got sent the autism test. Because oh, you yeah. Said yeah. We have to talk about this. We have to we have talk to about it. Did you take it? I did. I'm 19. Oh, so I'm she's normal. How? I'm not. I'm, I'm not so autistic. jealous. I'm so jealous. Sorry. Me no. too, dude. We're fucking full dirt, bro. But that's what I'm saying. <laughs> how are. do you go to these Grammy when parties and these hats where you flick like, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm like, how are yeah. you going to these events when you are sober and autistic? Are you just freaking out? <laughs> no. The so time? yeah. So it was like that for probably I'd have to say the past three years. It was like me literally just white knuckling everything. Yeah. I would rock like back and forth and like. If I had to go out on stage, I would just have to suck it up, you know? Mm-hmm. And I really feel like one of the major keys to not letting your anxiety control your life is working through it. Oh, yeah. Like, yep. to, you know, like, even with the OCD, it's like drinking a bottle of water that you normally wouldn't have done. Or, like, you know, you have to – don't – submit to mm-hmm. your anxiety push through it because it really helps but a year ago I, ha- I started having some what I thought was health problems and I had to go on like a an elimination diet so I eliminated sugar mm-hmm. completely from my um, diet and it has been a game changer like when I tell you that I go to these events now and like do things and don't ha- and have zero anxiety like it's wild my OCD kicks in more than like my anxiety mm-hmm. like it's so weird whereas before I would have full-on panic attacks like now I I'm just kind of like, all right, if I have to hug you or like people right. go to shake my yeah. hand, I'm like, oh, I'll give you naps, you yeah, know? Yeah. Wow. Like, can we normalize dapping? Yes. <laughs> that was the best thing that came yeah. out of the pandemic was not shaking hands or not having oh. to touch people. I'm if like, can I we can, just keep that? Because yeah. if I could wear that. gloves 24-7, yeah. I would. Like, yeah. I'm that weird. You're like, what's up with Michael Jackson over here? <laughs> <laughs> Literally. I did it. <laughs> I did that at my meet and greets. People were like, what? And I had to make an announcement about it. Yeah, I was like, listen, motherfuckers, I don't like touching people. If you touch somebody and they're wet, I'm going to think about it forever. Oh, I'm going to think about it forever. And it's just like it's going to loop in my mind. But yes, cutting sugar out has been a real lifesaver and a game changer. And also, I think working through a lot of, you know, trauma and therapy and stuff like that. But you're totally right with the exposure therapy. Yeah. So that's what I started doing stand up again. And I started for like the travel. Traveling, you know how we hate traveling, mm-hmm. forcing myself to travel, mm-hmm. forcing myself to do stand up. Like they say, what's behind your greatest fear is your greatest gift. Absolutely. So you gotta fucking, Game uh, of you have to, and it's gonna suck, and you're gonna shake, mm-hmm. and you're gonna just do it puke. Scared. You're gonna fucking puke, have yeah. panic attacks. Yep. It, the first few times that you do it, it could be even a year. Yeah. And you're gonna fucking, oh, yeah. I'm so, still. Oh, yeah. Brittany and I have a show at the improv on Wednesday? Thursday. Aww. Thursday? Are we here Thursday? 
We have some, maybe oh, we should shit. go. We should yeah. Come so we're nice. so we have a show, and and I get so nervous before every show, and mm. she's such a pro. She mm. just gets up there and well, she's fucking, she's a nineteen. She's just unaffected. She's a nineteen. <laughs> <laughs> she's great. She's level headed. <laughs> she just goes up there and fucking. And she's all before the show, just talking to everybody, all That's chill. That's how my husband is. I'm just she's, like in my head, like yeah. <laughs> she's like rocking in the corner. Is that, is, is that funny? Yeah, that's funny. No, and like just keep yeah. like psycho. But mm-hmm. for that reason, because you have all that energy that you're able to give to the crowd, you have a much different performance than me most of the time. Yeah. You're very high energy, and you get people involved, and she's great. And I'm very like deadpan. <laughs> I'm like people could not even we be know in how the to room. turn it on. And you turn know it what off. I mean? Yeah. yeah, I don't have that switch. I'm just kind of deadpan all you're just time. stable yeah well, yeah we love that I we mean, love that for you rub it in rub it in Brit. get carried away <laughs> <laughs> you don't even know about britney's had, weekend had yeah weekend. Well, i would love to hear about britney's weekend, weekend. Oh, <laughs> britney took a lot of dicks this <laughs> yeah. oh, we love that that's how Haley is in our crew we're always living vicariously yeah. through Haley? we're gonna tell we're gonna Haley tell the, the shit monster? stain <laughs> we're telling the shit stain story what's the shit oh my god well let's hear about britney's long no i mean like listen the nba players are my achilles heel and i Maybe yes, fucked baby. one or two. Oh, <laughs> nice. Hundred. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Listen, yeah, Are we allowed just, to drop names? No, oh, I right, got you know it. I got my back nice and blown out, so I'm walking, nice. I got a little crip walk. Now. Oh, I love that. Yeah. She's like just yeah. fucking hobbling in here. Yeah, dude, she had a good weekend. <sighs> <laughs> but to be fair, I hadn't had sex since November, so oh that's yeah, a really. Me dead. either, and I'm married. No, I'm just I kidding. Know. <laughs> How about that though? My yeah. husband. I mean, my husband's 61, so he's just like not as horny as right. usual. You know yeah. what I mean? You get older, and like, like intimacy for us is like me sitting there while Friendship. he trims his bonsai trees. Bro, we're gonna talk about that on my podcast. <laughs> like, I want to know about the bonsai trees. Do you trim bonsai trees no, too? No. Is it like a bonding experience? No, I just sit there and I'm cleaning it up. I'm like, this is very <laughs> messy. Yeah. 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 Really a big messy project. <laughs> Like, couldn't have found a cleaner crazy. hobby. Like, <laughs> he just blows it everywhere. Yeah. It's Listen, we're going to limit this to once a week, honey. Once a week. So I can That's catch a, all these clips. OCD cleanliness. Mm-hmm. I fucking yeah. hate it. He comes in and there's just little, little stems everywhere. Like, no, they fall no. off of him. Yeah. They're just all around the house. Brittany just has a leaf blower. She's like, boom. Yeah. <laughs> Who could imagine Tommy Lee fucking trimming bonsai trees? Bro. That's times hilarious. Yeah. Dude, he's, he's so chill as fuck now. I love yeah. that, though. He's you. so normal now. Yeah. Like, he's just so calm. Well, he feels safe with you, I'm yeah, sure, too. Yeah, he's a normal dude now is like yeah. very con- like Wait. who would think that he's the normal one right i've actually always heard that about him though like so through chill. the grapevine is that he's like he was wild in his younger days yeah. but like you know now he's kind of like just leveled out yeah but it's crazy how age does that to you because my dad was a dickhead back then and now he's like you know on the his best. two feet in the grave and he's fucking cool as shit you wow. know and you're like damn is this what life is about well i think the closer you get to death the more you realize what actually matters and i think when you're young and you're all fired up and you think you know money sex drugs all that stuff is important the yeah. older you get the more you realize just like being chill and mm-hmm. causing the least amount of drama and just being you know yeah. a sense of like peace in everyone's life is what is important mm-hmm. and you just want people yeah. around you that love you yeah. yes yeah. yes that's, that's it all no that negativity mm-hmm. no fucking just nice no people bullshit. drama yeah. is stressful i get your cortisol levels up oh i can't handle it can't that's like it. constantly high cortisol i'm like mm. yeah like i hate it dude I yeah. get, so i like can't hang out with anyone i'm always no. just by myself i'm the same way ask her yeah. it's like yeah. i put people like we'll go have to go eat dinners like even last night i hopefully this comes out <laughs> this person can't figure out who it is but like we'll have to have dinners i'll put people in between me and the people we're having dinner with so i don't have to f- carry the whole conversation the whole time because it just gives me so much anxiety i hate that yeah dude. when you're with someone who doesn't talk yeah <laughs> or that it's that long pause and my trauma doesn't allow it so i always have to like say weird shit or do something yeah Two we're the same i can't yeah, for sure. i can't Haley, you want to talk about your shit story? Oh, yeah. What's the shit stain story, 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 Haley? Haley. What the fuck? So Haley goes, where'd you meet this dude? On Tinder, right? Or Grindr? Bumble. Bumble. Okay, she met this dude on Bumble. Shit. (laughs) Literally. (laughs) And they were talking for a few weeks, whatever. He comes over the house. Fucking Haley and him, bang. She rides the shit out of him, whatever. This dude stand stands up literally he stands up and she she's getting dressed you know he's getting ready to leave he stands up and then sits back down really quick and she's like 
did you forget something? And he's like, oh, no, nope, just gathering my stuff off the table, you know? And no. Haley's like, okay, whatever. <gasps> so he leaves and she goes and she looks on her couch and there's two fucking just long skid marks. Ew! <laughs> no! What the fuck? And she sniffs it. No! You stuck your face in it? You're like, is this She's chocolate? Like, <laughs> you tasted it, you licked it. <laughs> it. <laughs> and so the dude is like so weird with her now because no. he knows he fucking left the skid Shit. marks on her fucking I I have been begging her I'm like give me your fucking phone Dude. because I want to text him and be like I know what you did yes. <laughs> I know what you did last summer on like the sheets. literally yeah. just I know you left fucking skid marks on my fucking couch motherfucker you just send him a pack of dude wipes <laughs> dude guys like don't wipe their ass yeah or wash it yeah Dude, or wash Mike, it. do you wipe your ass when you shit Absolutely. oh yeah because I notice like guys like they don't wipe when they pee they just shake it yeah no well, not at all yeah, yeah. Ugh. Yeah, no, I think that you should. No, I had I had a boyfriend who did that, and it kind of er- icked me out. That he it was wiped weird. it. Yeah, it was really weird. I was just like, mm, I don't know if I'm. If I was a guy, this. I would constantly be cleaning my shit with like yeah. wipes. Like yeah, I don't know. Sure. I just feel like ugh, like guys just don't. All the like, smegma. And, ugh, ugh. There's just a lot ball From cheese and cheese. shit. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Ugh. One time I was sucking a guy's dick and I went like to get the balls and I got like lint on my tongue. Oh. <laughs> That's better than like when you lift the balls and all you can smell is their asshole. I know. Oh. It's, it's the worst, dude. Or they have toilet paper yes. in their asshole yes. and you're just like, God dang it. Dude, like, God, I gotta God. finish this. I gotta see it through. Yeah. You know? Just eating the toilet paper. Yeah. Yeah. Mm, yeah. Yummy. <laughs> I love it. Just go cry. It's like popcorn. <laughs> Uh, oh. Popcorn. Uh. God, yeah. men are fucking nasty. The yeah. fact that we do put their dicks in our mouth is crazy. Yeah, just like, think their it, dicks have been in, inside other vaginas, and we're just yeah, sucking it up, dude. You know, like, like I want mine like fully sterilized. Like I want to send him to she's like gonna go home and I be like, like, Tommy, peel the skin off your dick right now. Yeah. <laughs> Need to go get a chemical like a banana. Peel. Yeah. yeah, literally. I want to wipe it with a Lysol wipe. I'm like, give me that thing. Put some vinegar and. Fucking bleach on it. Let me scrub it with a toothbrush. Oh just fucking, it Ugh, I hate that. Ugh, ugh, I can't even think about it. Ugh. Oh my god! All right, do you want to read the next one, B? Sure. Oh god, what is this one? Uh, donuts and boobies. Hell yeah, man. I dated a guy when I was 16 and I really liked him. Things were going pretty good for a while. His parents liked me and his friends liked me. Fast forward to his 17th birthday. I requested him to get donuts for the party because I really love them. He forgot about it. And I'm going to be honest, I was a total cunt about it. I mean, I yelled and got really mad at him and told him that I really just wanted one thing for this birthday and he couldn't do it. Looking back, it was definitely one of the worst things I could do. But I was 17 years old and genuinely stupid at this point in time we ended up having a huge argument and then he dumped me we got back together and i thought things went back to normal fast forward five to six months we were starting to have a lot of problems and i guess he had mentally checked out of the relationship and started seeing another girl while we were together we broke up again and i was in a really bad space and did a lot of underage drinking and smoking weed i finally moved on and posted a really nice picture on instagram a lot of guys liked it and everyone was talking about me rebounding he apparently did not take this well and ended up sending my nudes to a random guy on instagram that guy then ended up leaking those photos on a to Reddit and a bunch of other places. So not only was I cheated on, but I ended up getting my boobs fully exposed to the entire world because I posted a nice picture on Instagram and asked for fucking donuts. <laughs> I'm okay now, but let's just say I'm traumatized by men for the rest of my life. By the way, that's illegal. That's illegal. That's revenge yeah. porn. Yeah, yeah. Rev- yeah. She's 17, underage. Yeah. yeah. That's like a that double guy, whammy. That guy could totally <clears throat> go to jail if she could have proved it was him that... Yeah. yeah, that put her pictures on Reddit. I've never understood why people do stuff. I fucking hate Reddit, but I've never understood why people do stuff like that. Like, why is putting somebody's nudes revenge? You know, like yeah. it's just like so. Like, weird I to look me. great naked. Please. Why is that even? Yeah. <laughs> why, that and like, why is that even an option? Right. Well, is I that had, where your brain goes? Right. Like, I'm gonna fucking upload her nudes yeah. to embarrass yeah, her. Yeah, and like, like by the way, a different kind of creepy. If yeah. she looks hot, it's just gonna do her. Favor. Oh yeah. Like it's not right. gonna do anything bad. Dudes, we're just men haters. Some men fucking <laughs> suck. I she, mean, we're, she, we're the she man woman. What is it? The fucking that they say it on a. Uh, you know what I'm talking about? Oh yeah. Woman yes, that's it. But we're the we're the she man man haters. <laughs> I love that. I love that you knew what I was talking about. Oh my god, I knew, but I just didn't have the verbiage. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <me> either. <laughs> okay. In 
uh, this is a long one. Okay. In 2015, I moved to LA and matched with a lawyer named Randy on Bumble. Ta- my dad calls Bumble Fumble. Fumble! Yeah, that That's is hilarious. Great. That's great. Yeah. Fumble. Um, my dad, by the way, I'm going to just say this quickly. He's a savage on the apps. Like, he will show up to dates because he lives in, like, suburban, like, suburbs of Milwaukee. Mm-hmm. So, like, suburban, he's in his 60s. You know, he calls dating, digging through the recyclables. Oh, and fuck. he's like, it's, you know, he's, I love like, dad. he's like, they're leftover for a reason. But he will go to dates and pull up their picture and it's like he didn't understand what a filter or like a, that a photo could be edited. Pull up their picture, hold it next to their face, and be like, "This isn't you." Where is she? No, and leave. That's in hilarious. person. Yes, savage. He's like, I'm not wasting my time. When's dad's pa-. birthday? He's uh, January nineteenth. Oh, Capricorn. Capricorn. Capricorn Aquarius. Yeah. He's on the same cusp as me. Yeah, yeah. that's wow. hilarious. Yeah, yeah. He's, I love dad. Dad's my hero. Yeah, he's a fucking savage. He's like, "What is this? Oh, look at all these neck wrinkles." I'm like, "Damn." Oh. <laughs> Oh, my dad's a Capricorn too. Aww. Yeah. Is he single? Oh my God. No, no he's married, but he's like the nicest guy. I know. I know. Yeah, but that's funny, dude. Mm. That's funny. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Can you imagine? Mm-mm. No, I downloaded no. Hinge for my dad when I was home because he got rid of Bumble and now he wants Hinge. And so I got Hinge on there and now he's calling it unhinged because like, <laughs> all the women are hitting him up so much. And I'm like, dad, you still got it. Aww. Well, his dad's fucking living his best life. Though. Yeah, good old Charlie. Trying man. to get out Aww, there. Charlie's <laughs> cool. What's dad? Dad's name over here? Ron. Ron, Bill, <laughs> and Charlie. Yeah, yeah. We need to get they them together. Like a real group. <laughs> yeah. The three amigos. Yeah, they Fucking need a podcast. <laughs> oh, my God. No. Okay, so we met Randy M. Bumble, tall, successful, a tall, successful partner at his firm. But according to the app, he was 2,700 miles from me. Figuring he must be traveling, I didn't let that sway me. Once we started chatting, he told me he lived in New York, and we must have matched while he was in L.A. for business. He asked me... What was something crazy I've done I've never done before on a date? And I answered skydiving. He said, "Done. We're going skydiving on our first date." Whoa! No thanks. No. <laughs> no, Miss my me. heart is in my throat right Miss now. Miss me with that shit. Yeah. Okay. After a few skypes, the era before Facetime, I felt comfortable enough to ask Skype. him to stay. I know, right? Throwback to stay with me for his visit. I picked him up from LAX, and we headed to another airport where we would go skydiving. I noticed during the car ride he was very jittery, but I found this endearing. Maybe he was just nervous. Later in the evening, we went to dinner at a nice restaurant, and I ordered a glass of wine. He didn't have one, but didn't explain why. On our way back from the restaurant, he plugged in an address to the GPS, and we parked the car in a lot in Beverly Hills. I didn't know where or what this was, but as soon as we got to the lot, several others were there and greeted him by name. Hi, Randy. We walked into the building and sat down, and the meeting started. It took only a few minutes for me to realize it was an AA meeting. I wonder if I know Randy. Oh. <laughs> I said <laughs> politely. And when it came to my turn, I just said I'm a friend. It felt uh, I felt awkward, but only because I wasn't given a heads up about this. When we got back to my apartment after the AA meeting, Randy explained to me that he was six months sober and it was a cocaine issue. He used to spend $8,000 a month on blow. I knew I wasn't interested in dating him, but figured why ruin the next two nights while he was here? I'll have some fun and wish him well with his life in New York. Then he dropped another bombshell. Turns out all the cocaine use had led to some other unsafe behavior, and he now had herpes. He explained that he had girlfriends in the past. As long as they were safe, they never contracted it from him. I applauded him for his honesty, but but ended up leaving with his he ended up leaving with his things and getting a hotel i thought it was over and that i would never hear from randy again but that's when things started to get very weird he started sending me dozens of texts asking me to cuckold him he asked me if i was willing to have sex with another man in front of him and then had have them come inside of me so he could suck out the cum what the fuck? Randy went from not zero a snowball. To 100. <laughs> He's in the snowball. I'm sober and I'm healthy now. And by the way, can I suck some cum out of your pussy? I'm dead. What the fuck? Uh, Lawyers are the worst. It's they crazy. were always the weirdest. Really? Are yeah. they? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh my God. He started sending me expensive gifts and left me a voice voice notes about his desire for me to financially ruin him. I'm not talking a few texts. I'm talking hundreds of texts. And he started sending me pics of his dick and asked me to tell him how small it was. He would say things like, tell me this tiny dick means nothing to you. I wanted to block him, but my morbid curiosity got the better of me. This went on for months. I never saw him again, and eventually he did he did stop texting and calling. I thought it was over until 2017, two years after the one and only time I ever saw this man. I got a call from a woman asking me if it was really over between Randy and I. I was so confused at first, completely forgetting about this guy. Turns out it was Randy's new fiance. They had been together for a year now, but according to her, he never got over me. I told her I met him once. We never dated. We never had sex. The only time I ever saw his dick was in pictures. She felt 
assaged. I don't even know that word. Assuaged. Assuaged by this and mm. shocked that it was only one meeting because mm-hmm. of the way he told the story. I was the love of his life. I later sent her a text that said, you deserve better and you can get better. They still got married. In 2020, I was back on the apps and saw Randy again. I took a screenshot of his profile, sent it over to what I presumed to be his still wife. She told me they got divorced and she should have listened to me. I hope she didn't get herpes. Oh That's my a wild goodness. ride. So yeah. they skydiving or not? Yeah, I think they did. And then they got dinner and then he didn't drink. Wait, yeah. tell me tell me like the craziest lawyer story. Oh, I th- I I was just in interjecting. Lawyers yeah, and actors yeah. are both fucking uh, weird. Lawyers and doctors oh, are doctors. but I used to have a lawyer that was a sugar daddy and it was him and his wife. Oh, what? Yeah, him and his wife paid me so much fucking money. He was a huge lawyer in Vegas and I was pretty much essentially dating them both. <gasps> Yeah, it was crazy. Did what? you like that? Uh, I mean, I was getting paid, so. Right, right, right. You know. like, I can like anything yeah. for 20, 20 grand a month. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> literally. I'll, I'll put up with a lot. Yeah. 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 No, that's how it was back then. But yeah, wow. I, I mean, there's not any one weird thing I can point out. They're just super controlling. Everything that I heard in there, the penis humiliation, mm-hmm. the wanting to get snowballed and stuff like that, totally makes sense. Snowballed? That's what it's called when you suck Yeah, out of I think that's what it's called, snowballed, right? When you, Whoa, well, dude. We can Google it. <laughs> yeah i think it's when somebody it's either they come in you or somebody else comes in you and they suck it out jesus it's called a snowball yeah. it's like a chili dog Whoa. and like a chili yeah. dog oh my god yeah give it a goog give it a goog a, babe uh one of the nba players i hooked up with used to be obsessed with a different guy coming in me and then him having sex with me right afterwards he has a breeding kink of some sort what it's like a breeding kink what does that mean it's like they want somebody to come inside of you and then they come. it's like a the sperm fighting yes <laughs> yeah yeah like a my weird sperm thing. needs to battle yeah. his yeah. sperm yeah. Turns out what's it called Fel- Fel- oh Fel- well yep that's what it's called yep and then what is snowballing Snowballing is a sexual practice that acts of spitting semen into a part. Okay, so it's you're spitting it into your partner's yeah. mouth. Yeah. Jeez, I feel like I'm so fucking vanilla. <laughs> I, like I really I'm am. I'm like, honey, just lay on top of me and let's look in each other's eyes. Like I'm but so. But that's romantic. Cheesy. No, that, I mean, who's? I'm not doing wow. this shit. I mean, no, Jeez. we're good. This is yes. shit you get paid to do. You yeah. know, like Ugh. not fucking do with Damn, your husband. That's fucking gnarly, dude. Yeah. Oh. Yikes! <laughs> Fuck! Isn't it so nice though? Like when you do find someone that you're just like happy with, that yeah. it's like you don't need to do all the fucking crazy Mm-mm. shit. No. They, they are happy just to be with you, and they love you and your soul. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Absolutely, it's the best feeling in the world. My husband's super. He's gonna hate this, but he's super vanilla. Yeah, my so, Tommy is yeah. too. Actually, I don't mind it. I'm fine with it. I'm always like, let me try this weird toy and whatever, and he's like, no, <laughs> yeah, same. I'll be no. like, let me put this vibrator on your balls, and he's like, fuck no. Yeah, and no. I'm like, okay, well, whatever. They're just like like regular guys you yeah. know what i mean mm-hmm. like our friend sent us as a joke it was like a a thing that you put on a dick and it's like squishy and it has all these like little things inside and you like put it on your oh like a, a cover yeah like, like a, a thing yeah. and like mm-hmm. and he's like no no i'm like come on <laughs> like i'm Let's fucking give it a whirl, <laughs> give it a whirl. <laughs> let me play with it let me give myself a uti <laughs> yeah oh my god guys <laughs> teeny's <laughs> it's teeny's new chew toy no, no. literally <laughs> literally if I, I leave my vibrator on the bed teeny grabs it and runs yeah. like she's like <laughs> Like she like loves it. I'm like Aww. no. She's like right into the that is room. It, Chachi it's has a big nasty. stuffed dick that she got Stop. me. That he. Li- Do you have a picture of him with the a dick? Stuffed dick. Fucking. He literally w- runs around with his dick in his mouth, loves and it's it. hilarious. Just I loves so it. Funny. Yeah. yeah. I, I have it. I can show you can. later. I think I have one on my phone. The dogs are the best. Yeah. Do you want to have kid kids or no? No. No, because you're. I just I've never been that girl even as a little girl I was like I'm gonna grow up I want to be a boss of something I didn't know what it was I want to have my own business like I've always been attracted to like strong women who just didn't have kids and like did their own thing you know yeah and I have a bonus baby yeah so that's good so enough lucky. for me and she seems yeah. like really close to you she's awesome it's taken some time but yeah. I think you know this past year especially we've gotten a lot closer and I I think her resentment towards me and her dad has kind of subsided because, you know, she's been through a lot of shit, too, man. So, yeah. And he and he pretty much has had full custody of her most of the time. Mm -mm. He got full custody when we had just we got married in 
August of 2016, and we got full custody of her January of 2017. Okay, okay. So but was she like? Would she see both parents like before that a lot or not really? Um, so they had like a really weird thing, and I never want to talk bad about Bailey's mom. She yeah. just never was really um, an easy woman to get along with. Right, right. So she would keep Bailey from him. He had to go to court, fight her to just be able to see Bailey. But she also told Bailey, you know, a bunch of horrific things about course, him so yeah. as a child so they do, she they just, try to plant the seed mm, of yeah yeah and even when we got custody of her you know even down to this past year which bailey talks about it on a new podcast episode that we're gonna drop but you know her mom has just done so m- many horrific things to her and she doesn't deserve it dude yeah. you know so that's really sad well i'm sure she's really happy that she has you at least you know yeah i think she is now yeah <laughs> it yeah. took so i had to earn my fucking title with her but no i love her to death and i would do anything for her and she knows i that. love that i'm so protective over her i love that she's my little nugget. i know and it's like you have your dogs too so it's like mm-hmm. i feel like people put a lot of pressure on women they're like you have to have a kid you have i to hate do that this. You have to. i get those comments under Same. my posts all the yeah. time that's like can we normalize dolly parton doesn't have kids and you don't yeah. see people asking her every fucking yeah. minute or jennifer like, aniston or chelsea handler so people, yeah, like there's, there's just yeah there you don't there's so many women who don't have kids like let's normalize not asking people hey are you gonna have kids first of all it's none of your business secondly there's numerous reasons why women choose not to have kids you yeah. know so. and also like reproductive issues i mean i have oh, so absolutely. much going on mm-hmm in my ovaries that I'm like I don't want to throw a child in mm-hmm. there it's like already World War 3 yeah. the kids yeah. Yeah. haunted house yeah, yeah. literally <laughs> yeah yeah full of clowns yeah, exactly. the baby's like what are all these bread worms <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's literally full of, filled yeah. with ghosts of like it's kids that used to be in so, there oh, <laughs> so god <laughs> it's so bad so many like cysts and yeah. oh god like I'm like that's the last thing I want to deal with you know yeah. what I mean and I think people just need to like understand that about mm-hmm. people too you know no, absolutely yeah it's a big Jay and I did try to we went to um, we were going to do um, in vitro. Yeah. Well, I, I would I'll do a surrogate any yeah. day, but we were going to do in vitro and they did one test on me where they had to see if your tubes were because I've had two ectopic pregnancies oh. where they had to see if your where your tubes are clear. It was the most painful fucking thing I've ever oh. gone through in my life. And they're like, this is worse than childbirth. And I was like, if this is worse than childbirth, uh, I don't, don't want it, do dude. It. Like yeah. it scared the shit out of me. And Fuck. I was like, you know what? No, I'm not doing this. Like, Oof, dude, I can't. I can't. I mean, I already. The, when I get cramps, I have to like Same. call nine one one. Like, mm, I have yeah. to use a a tens machine. You know what that mm-hmm, is? Yep. Yeah, I have a tens machine that I put on my ovaries and it mm. shocks them. Oh, so that it doesn't hurt. So I'm Gosh. like, I can't even imagine throwing a baby in there. I would, no. I would be not good. Yeah. Yeah. So. But okay. thanks to all the people who do have babies. Good yeah. For you. Thank um, you guys for keeping this <laughs> world for yeah. turning the planet. Um, <laughs> yeah. All right. So we do this segment. Go for it. Where it's basically we people write to us for advice. Okay. And we call it bad advice because we obviously don't have great advice. So <laughs> yeah. You guys don't want yeah. advice from me. <laughs> the last person to ask for last two people to ask for yeah. advice. Yeah. So three. Britt, you want to read it? No, read I just read okay. the last minute. I was having a stroke. <laughs> <laughs> My fiance and I need your bad advice. She has this weird fetish for bellies and belly buttons. She especially has a kink for my Audi belly button. Oh my God, Tommy has an Audi and I Does love he? it. I push on it like a little Aww. trampoline. It's so cute. Okay, uh, so I'm this girl. This is, it's me. It's, it's Tommy. You know, right? and he's like, by the way, my name's Tommy Lee, but can you keep it anonymous? Okay. Especially with um, her wanting to mess around and play with it in different ways. Uh, especially with long, wet tongue. She wants to suck nibble and playfully bite my belly button she likes to blow raspberries on my belly and lick whipped cream and honey and chocolate syrup off of my Audi belly button I want to learn to love this for her what sort of tummy activities can we do to feed her kink how can she play with my Audi and how can I play with her innie it sounds like you guys are already doing it yeah this is so sweet but I thought like the Audi and the innie should fuck I bet they would fit like (laughs) yeah just mesh flesh all a mesh oh my god Tommy has the cutest belly button Aww. it's like big it's like a big circle like a quarter and then it like pops out a little bit and i just push it all the Aww. time and he gets so weirded out about it but like <laughs> i just love it i'm like this girl like it's a fascinating when it's puffy <laughs> yeah you know like because mine's a full innie yeah mine same. used to be an audi when i was young and i had like a big buddha belly and an audi and Aww. now i went in and i'm 
Actually, I'm really happy. <laughs> I think if I had a big belly button and a fucking like, like, like a clit, no. like, oh no. no, was it like you a, got nub? a big fat clit? Kind of, yeah. Oh, I love that. Brittany's seen it. Yeah, I don't think it's fat. Well, it's... My, you have you seen mine? Yeah, I thought mine was giant. Let's compare. Yeah, yeah. no, but right, that's now where we're gonna put the out. Uh, yeah, subscribe to our OnlyFans where we compare our <laughs> yeah. pussies. Anyway, let's go over to the other website. Yeah, <laughs> it sounds like you guys are already having a great time yeah, over there with the I belly button. So sweet and so like just keep letting her suck on it as long as you clean it and shit you don't want fucking weird belly button shit on your fucking inner mouth we usually do good news at the end is there any good news that you want to share bunny anything really positive that yes you've realized lately or uh like about the world yeah about the world or you or anything yeah um i mean this week is grammy week so i'm manifesting that daddy is gonna win at least one grammy yeah so let's put it in the air. We think let's so. put it in the air. We think and so. Yeah, for sure. I feel it. Yeah. And I mean, just, yeah, that right now is what we're all I can focus on, really. Amazing. Yes. Yeah. And this is your first Grammys? Uh, this or is not. his first Grammy. Yeah. 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 So he got two nominations, fun. so I think he's going to get one for sure. I think so, yeah. too. Yeah. And I think you're going to look beautiful and have a great time. Yeah, I love you. Guys, make sure to follow Bunny on Instagram. It's BunnyXO. Uh, it's XOMG. It's Bunny. XOMG. It's Bunny on Insta. And then on TikTok, is it the same? XOMG. It's Bunny. XOMG. It's Bunny on TikTok. And then she has the amazing podcast, the Dumb Blonde podcast, which you host. You guys do it together, right? Or no? I bring Just her in. on and off. Buddy, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. But you've had some great guests on there and yeah. a lot of really amazing amazing episodes so make sure to check her out on the dumb blonde podcast we've had so much fun with you today oh, and thank you for thanks for coming you for and coming. you're I'm fucking amazing. rad dude yeah, I'm you. so glad to meet you we're gonna make out after this yeah <laughs> I can't wait kiss, but you guys <laughs> don't forget sorry I'm oh, just gonna sorry. happen yes, yeah yes, no yes. just write us next week for um I don't know what our topic even is we'll figure it out TBD. TBD. No, Send us your worst. <laughs> right, I said this is the worst pod at justmediahouse.com and follow us on social, uh, Instagram, Twitter. Is that even a thing? X. Do we have a Twitter? I don't even think we have a Twitter. Never mind. I'm falling apart. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. She's, she's apart. thinking about her <laughs> NBA players. Yeah. We love a Twitter. I'm dead. I'm like big dicks. Okay. Yeah. Anyway. Follow us at bigdicks.com. Follow us at bigblackdicks.com. Yeah. <laughs> no, uh, this is the worst pod on Instagram, and we will see you guys next week. Bye. See you next week. Bye. Bye. Thank you guys for listening to This is the Worst podcast powered by Just Media House. This is the Worst is hosted and executive produced by Brittany Furlan Lee and Brittany Schmidt. If you enjoyed our show, don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, rate, and review. Stay connected with us on Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, Facebook, and Snapchat at This is the Worst Pod. Studio provided by Second Floor Studios, podcast and social artwork produced by The Forward Digital and Product Limited. Thank you to our post-production team at Creative Evolution Studios. Theme song to This Is The Worst podcast performed by Midnight Noise. This is the worst where we are going to make the best of the worst. Hold on. There, do we want to show them the one that the every press fucking article the always magazine? The worst one. I literally have five chins and I'm like, you don't. You have to I look try like so Slimer, hard dude. Oh, I know. Slimer. They make sure every time they post, every fucking time Stop. they post a fucking article of me and my husband, they use this fucking picture. And there's one of me and Tommy walking into a movie theater and literally my face is... <laughs> like it's insane like I don't even think I even ever made that face cause I'm like yeah, I have to try yeah, but you're just like mid sneeze like, it's literally like mid sneeze yeah, like Jim Carrey in the mask oh. like, <laughs> like it's like my chin is this long like oh. people are like what is that a mask like it's scary oh.